Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Shlomi Noch. This is an unsplit brain MySQL session. Um, I'm with the uh, GitHub database infrastructure team. Um, I guess you know GitHub. The incentive for this session was an unfortunate uh, outage uh, that we took a few months ago. Uh, we had a split brain scenario, and I would like to quickly illustrate my skill wise what happened and then discuss uh, the, the rest of this session. So, what we had. Uh, what we had basically is a data center network partition problem, right? Uh, an entire DC went down uh, partition. So imagine we had this cluster. We had multiple clusters, of course, but let's discuss th just this one. Wow. Uh, we had this uh, uh, database cluster with this master, and the master and the replicas got network isolated. And our orchestrator failover mechanism kicked in and failed Everything, all the databases, to, so all the masters, all the writers, failed over to the other DC, to the failover DC. And so Orchestrator promoted this half of the cluster and made this the master. But during that time when this was network isolated, the old master still took some writes from local applications. And so when this was promoted and the entire GitHub failed over to using this master, this already diverged. Now, this was expected behavior. It was actually written. We, we knew about it. And that was supposed to have been fine. But unfortunately, and for reasons outside the scope of this session, we had to fail back to this cluster, to this DC. We, we just had to. And by the time we realized we have to fail back, there was like an, half an hour's worth of writes on the newly promoted master. We couldn't just throw them away. It was half an hour, it's a lot of production traffic. Now, this master only took a few seconds worth of uh, bad traffic, right? Maybe just a thousand transactions or so. It's not, not too much, maybe a half minute, depends on the master. But they diverged. We couldn't fail back without losing the data, and we couldn't set up replication between the two because they diverged. They would no longer cooperate. So uh, the big outage time was due to the time it took us to uh, restore from backup all these dozens and dozens of servers in this DC and catch up with the replication and uh, et cetera. So you know the deal. And the question was, could we have somehow just rolled back these bad 1,000 transactions and magically amend the database to be back in sync? And so I would like to introduce GitHub's MySQL Rewind. That's a new tool that does just that. Uh, what it allows us to do is, given a partitioned or uh, split brain scenario, I'd be able to take one server at a time and connect it uh, into the uh, healthy cluster. And it will be fine. It will be fixed. It will be replicating. The cache will be warm, and we will be happy. So I'd like to illustrate how this works. This is, uh, this is the session illustrates um, the steps to making this work. So there are a few components to this uh, solution. And one of them, the first is uh, GDID. So we run uh, MySQL, Oracle MySQL GDIDs. And GDIDs have uh, many properties. I'd like to illustrate one of them. One property of GDID is that each server remembers forever the entire uh, change log or the entire set of GDIDs that have ever been applied on that server, right? So you can expect these numbers to be in the millions, in the milliards, whatever, right? Uh, a server has its own UUID and then it says, yeah, I have GDIDs one, two, something. But then uh, as binary logs get purged, the server also maintains the identities of the GDIDs that have been thrown away just for the records. But it, it keeps them in the records. It knows that sometime in the future it has applied those entries and they're not here today, but I know about them. This property is very helpful to us. See, let's look at the, uh, at the cluster before uh, the outage and then at the two uh, uh, split brains. So before the outage, the master applied some binary logs. And after the split brain, the, the old master applied some extra bad writes. Right? Those, those are the ones we want to get rid of. 
And the newly promoted master took normal production traffic, it's the green one over here, and both keep track of exactly what has been applied. And it turns out I can mathematically subtract, do this minus this, minus this to get the identities of the GDID entries that have been applied on this server and not on this server. So the new master used to replicate from that one. And so all this history is valid. But then we just need to identify what parts are, are the red GDID. So basically it's a subtra subtract, right? I do GDID executed of this master minus this one. This is the set of GDIDs that are the offensive entries, right? So now we know which transactions were bad. The next thing is that we're using role-based replication. And with role-based replication and with bin log row image uh, equals full, we have this uh, thing in the binary logs where if you, if you run MySQL bin log and variables, etc., each entry in the binary log, each update, delete, and insert tells you the entire image of the row before the change and the entire image of the row after the change. So for an update, that means all the columns before the change are listed with their values. All the columns after the change are listed with their values. The same for insert and delete. And that makes it possible to know what you need to revert. If you just replace these two, you basically revert the operation. Now, we don't need to do that by hand. Uh, MariaDB has the flashback option. This is a contribution by Alibaba, uh, contributed many years ago and incorporated uh, by MariaDB. So in, in MariaDB's MySQL bin log binary, you have this flash, uh, dash dash flashback option. And what it does is, is as follows. Imagine this is the normal binary log, right? You have inserts, you have updates, another insert, a delete. If you run MySQL bin log, that's what you'll see. If you run MySQL bin log dash dash flashback, what you'll get is the image on the right. It's the reverse order of anti-statements, right? It's the undo log. The first insert here is the anti-statement of this delete. This delete is the anti-statement of this insert. This is the anti of this update, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if I apply this binary log and then this, I've I've done nothing, in effect, right? I've nullified all the operation. And that's the basis for our rewind tool. So what, what we have so far, GDID tells us what transactions are bad. Flashback gives us the mechanism to undo transactions. But we're still missing a lot here. We're missing the connection between the GDIDs and the binary logs and the entries and the entities in the binary log. So let's look at this again. We have. We have the two masters, and one has diverged from the other. We want to take that bad master, that, this contaminated master, so to speak, and move it back in time. Ideally, we would move it to exactly the point of the split. But it is also valid to move it a little farther in time, right? Because the, a, any point on this line is consistent. It's OK. We waste a bit of effort, but it's OK if we take it a little farther back in time. Now, if we look at the binary logs on the contaminated master, those uh, bad GDIDs are somewhere within the binary logs, right? They could be within a single binary log or between two or three or whatever. Turns out uh, it's pretty easy to identify where these entries are in the binary log. See, every uh, binary log has a header that says previous GDIDs. So at the beginning of every binary log, it says what, what have been all the, G, the GDIDs thus far, right? This is my history, and now I'm a new binary log, and this is what's going to happen next. And if you take all the existing binary logs and you know, parse the headers from L, all of them, you can slice it, and you, you know exactly what GDIDs are executed within each and every binary log. And so we're able to figure out that the bad GDIDs are within, say, these two binary logs, 622 and 623. And so the next step is we identify the bad GDIDs. We know where we are, where they are in the binary logs. We generate, we use MySQL bin log dash dash flashback to generate the anti-binary log of these two binary logs, right? We generate the anti-binary log of 623 and the anti-binary log of 622. 
and then we apply them to MySQL. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, so simple. Because MariaDB's MySQL bin log has no notion of MySQL GDID. It's a different uh, product. It doesn't speak MySQL GDID. But we need G MySQL GDID to tell us what went wrong. And so we need to do a little bit of hacking, like this simple awk and sed strip, which I, I clearly don't need to explain. It's self-explanatory. And uh, we do a little bit of hacking. We inject some GDIDs. And we throw that back into MySQL, and we literally move MySQL back in time. So far, so good? Yes? Not so good. We moved back in time. The big question right now is, where are we? Is this the Renaissance? Is this the French Revolution? <laughs> you know, all these uh, movies, you move back in time, you need to figure out where you are. We are not in a good position right now because we can't just join back the replication stream as yet. If we look at the binary logs right now on that uh, you know, demoted master, we had those normal entries. We then had those bad entries. We just applied more weird entries. Right? The data set is consistent with some point in time, but the binary logs do not agree. The uh, GDID executed on that master thinks it's, it's someplace completely different, like something is really, really messed up right now. And so now what we need to do is to match this with the data set. We need to tell our time machine, yes, it's now 1995, right? You've jumped back in time uh, to this and that date. And we, it turns out we can actually do that. Because we rolled back, like say, we rolled back two binary logs. We know what GDID entries are in these binary logs. We can compute the difference between the current state minus the entries in the binary log and predict and project what would be the time ETA where we land. Does that make sense? OK. Before we continue, and, and at, at this point, at this point we can just do a reset master and set GDID purged into that value. And we, like, we erase MySQL's memory. And it thinks it's now in 1995, and it's up and running. And it's able to uh, change master 2, master 0 to position equals 1, join the replication stream, a little bit of replication lag, whatever. But then it's healthy. It, it can replicate, and it's, and it's fine. It's in sync. OK? Yeah. Uh, a few limitations, but we have more to talk about. So limitations are, uh, you cannot rewind DDL. Uh, it can be done manually. It would be painful. But if someone altered table during that time, that doesn't roll back. It's, it's a mess. Um, MySQL and Flashback neither support JSON or point or the newer data types. So that won't work. Uh, we do roll back a little bit more than we need to, because we move like. Uh, we roll back complete binary logs. It's much more convenient and I think a bit safer to do that. But then it, it gets us farther back in time than we strictly need, right? We, we go way back, which means we deapply a lot of transactions that we don't really need to deapply, but then we need to reapply them. So it takes more time. Um, and currently, that tool runs. Uh, on each and every server, but uh, yesterday I got some uh, nice comments on how that can be uh, improved. So the big question now is this. Look, we took two different tools that don't talk to each other and don't speak the same language. We have Oracle and GDIDs. We have Flashback that doesn't talk about GDIDs. We uh, threw in some macaroni said in awk script to make that look as if they talk to each other. Threw that in MySQL and then did some mathematical computation to predict the time at which we will land and say, yes, the data matches that time. Does that make you very confident? Would you run this in production? So, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, yeah, we actually have this being tested in production continuously daily as we speak right now. This is being tested in production and continuously reporting success or failure. Hopefully, success. So uh, I'd like to illustrate how this works. Um, the basic idea is that ideally, I would like uh, check some of the data uh, on the server, do something bad, rewind, check some of the data again, and would find the exact same checksum. 
Make sense? There's two, two problems with that. First, my data set is too big. Like checksum in the entire data set would take days. That's not very friendly for testing. Uh, so if something does go wrong, it will take me a couple months just to figure out what happens. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we're taking a checksum right now, but how can we predict that the time travel will return us to the exact same point? That's, that's a, bit, uh, a bit of a problem. So we did figure this one out. Uh, and very quickly, it goes like this. We take a replica, right? It's a testing replica. It's not part of production. But it's a, it's, it's a replication in the cluster. We stop replication. We issue a change master tool which resets the relay logs. It clears the relay logs. We rotate into a new relay log. We flush the binary logs. We rotate into a new binary log. Right? Everything is clean. We call this point zero. We grab 30, minutes, uh, 30 seconds worth of replication from the master, from production. But we don't apply it. We just run the, S the IO thread, not the SQL thread. Now our relay logs are full with real actual production, 30 seconds worth of data. The next thing we do is that we parse these relay logs and figure out what tables are actually being affected in these 30 seconds. These are not all of GitHub's tables. We can reduce the problem by only, you know, we don't need to check some tables that aren't being affected right now. And so we analyze the tables. That, that, that's also too big. We only take reasonably small tables and one random big table, which leaves us still with like 30, 40, 50 tables each run, which we decide, okay, these are the tables being affected in the rail levels, and these are the tables we're going to check some. That's going to take like between minutes and a few hours to check some all these tables. We take a checksum. The next thing we do, we kick the SQL thread. We apply those changes. Uh, on the server, which generates binary logs. Okay, so far? Good. Now we've applied 30 seconds worth of production uh, data. Next thing, for each of those tables we listed before, we randomly delete 10 rows. We just do damage, right? We just, whatever. We do damage. We try to delete rows from the end of the table because those are like high contention rows, which are likely to be used shortly, like the, the damage is bigger. And just to... Uh, not necessarily restricted, but for fun and glory, we also say, okay, now that we've corrupted the data, let's start replication for fun and try to, uh, to apply even more production data. For us, this, like, within a second or two, this breaks because there will be uh, a replication uh, problem, right? We just deleted the row, someone else is trying to update it. Replication will break. We've made a mess, everything is broken, and this is where we throw uh, GHMySQL Rewind uh, into the game. And it fixes, it, it uses the algorithm we described earlier. It fixes uh, the situation and moves us back in time. Now, we intentionally rotated the logs and we intentionally grabbed an amount, a reasonable amount of uh, uh, production data that we can predict that it will return us to exactly point zero, the exact point where we took the initial checksum. So whether our, our prediction was correct, we'll see. Now that uh, it has rewinded us, we check some of the tables again. We expect to find 100% match to the original checksum that we took uh, before the test began. And we do. This actually works. This runs continuously all the time. Right? Uh, the test is complete. We put the replication back into the, uh, the cluster. It catches up with replication lag. We do it again and again and again and again and again. This gives us the confidence that the tool is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Um, cool. We, we, we don't really want, want to use that tool ever, ever. We don't want to be in that situation ever again. Uh, it was not, <laughs> not a good place to be. So uh, we're really hoping to not do that. We are moving in multiple directions to never be in that situation again, to have plan B, C, D, E, and F uh, to mitigate the problem, right? Um, but if we do, we expect this tool to help us recover a server within minutes as opposed to many, many, uh, many hours. And, you know, the server is up and the, the cache is warm, so it's going to be very good on replication lag, etc. So th those are our expectations that we never expect to see again. Uh, the status right now, this is a shell script. Uh, There's just a 200 uh, lines of uh, shell script just using 
Oracle's MySQL bin log and MariaDB's MySQL bin log and some shell in Oak. At some point in the future, uh, I'd like to incorporate that into Orchestrator, which is a little bit of a problem because I'm using external tools to, to make that happen. And um, uh, fortunately, there's ongoing work. I don't know, Safe Harbor, et cetera. Uh, but um, I happen to know that, uh, and this, this was uh, presented yesterday, that uh, Oracle have begun uh, some work into this. So you would be able to, like, say, what are the GDID entries in my binary logs? And let's undo, select undo transaction of a given GDID set. So any client could do that, and that would be really awesome. So I really want to ask Oracle to keep on working that, please, please. Uh, that would be really nice. Um, and with that, I'm done. I have time for a couple questions. Yes, questions. Yes, sir. Um, amazing presentation. Thank you. About conflict resolution, if you start redoing transactions, you, you, know, you can't just, if you have two updates to the same table, how do you, if you undo a transaction and then it's been updated later, you must. Well, I've, I've, I, what I did was rolled back everything. I, sorry. Okay, the question was uh, if we have a conflict, uh, what, what about conflict resolution? If we had two transactions updating the same table? Wh what I did is I, I magically uh, brought up an image from the past and made MySQL's memory, I, I reset the memory and said, yeah, you're in 1995, right? Uh, all memory of those two transactions is lost. They, they do not exist anymore, right? The binary log is, is linear. Right, it's serialized. Uh, it was uh, printed in a serialized form originally, and we deapplied it in a serialized form. So there, there is no concurrent transaction resolution needed here, so to speak. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have already integrated this feature in Replication Manager, and uh, the feedback is that uh, it doesn't work for many workloads. First, we need rule-based replication which is not the case all the time for big batch uh, process and, and also uh, the DDL problem, create yes. uh, temporary tables, okay. things like this. And so the, the way I figure it out in Replication Manager is by uh, ZFS uh, snapshot. Okay, so the gentleman says uh, we already tried this with Replication Manager, which is also a failover mechanism, and there was feedback saying, uh, yeah, DDL doesn't work, and you wrote bin log format, and so you're using file system snapshots uh, yes. to fix the problem. Okay, ZFS. Uh, cool. Yeah, we use uh, bin log, uh, row bin log formats, and we're willing to. We don't. We're willing to to give this a try. So uh, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Last. No. Last question, please. Is there any way you could have done all this magic without the GTID? I I I don't know because we do use GDID, so I, my state of mind was let's try and use that. I I don't know. Right. Okay. Thank you very much.